great to be here and to see a few old Spark shareholders in the room. When I say old, I mean long-standing. Um, there's been uh, a little bit of a journey over the last five years and uh, three of those years we've been uh, listed. Uh, but uh, some of the guys here in the room have been seed shareholders right from the word go. So great to uh, see those people here. Um, as mentioned, Spark Technologies is a technology company, so it's certainly a, a, quite a different story from what we've been hearing in terms of uh, the type of companies that uh, we're not exploration. So um, our genesis goes back to working together with the University of Adelaide, in particular uh, in relation to graphene. So we started uh, working on using graphene in coatings to make coatings more anti-corrosive and also for anti-fouling. Um, we have now got to the point with, with graphene whereby we're producing our own product called Echo Spark uh, down at Lonsdale here in South Australia in Adelaide, uh, whereby we can make enough of this Echo Spark product to, to put into about 7 million litres of paint. So uh, this, this paint actually, when it's, uh, we've done all the testing to international standards over a number of years now using world experts that we have within Spark, and uh, we're able to achieve over 40% better anti-corrosion performance than existing coatings without Echo Spark. So um, massive improvements. We're working together with the global coatings companies. They're taking a long time to do their own, own work, uh, as you'd expect them to, to, to validate all the work that we've done and the data that we've provided them. But uh, in parallel, we're also working together with uh, a number of end users, so people that actually use the, the paint. Um, so we're getting them to, to add uh, Echo Spark to the coating uh, and to apply the, uh, that onto uh, trials of their um, coatings on their infrastructure. So steel infrastructure with oil and gas companies, um, government, defence, a whole host, whole range of different organisations um, looking to do trials with those companies. So we're on the verge of commercialising that product. Um, it's been a bit of time in the making, but uh, I think we're finally getting there, uh, as I say, in parallel with um, uh, the uh, global coatings companies as well as uh, end users. I should add that probably in the last six months we've taken a, a, a quite a, a little bit of a a shift in the way we've been thinking about it. We've also worked out that Echo Spark provides uh, huge sustainability benefits uh, to the tune of around well, over 20% uh, sustainability uh, of CO2 in terms of the uh, using Echo Spark over the life of the, the asset. So it, there's less maintenance involved, and with that less maintenance, uh, there's very substantial uh, sustainability benefits. Um, switching tact slightly um, to our renewable energy plays. Um, so first thing that I'll talk about is in relation to green hydrogen. So uh, through our relationship with the University of Adelaide, we were um, offered um, to get involved in photocatalytic water splitting. You go, what the hell's that? <laughs> but it's, uh, it, it's actually not as complicated as it may sound. It's, 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 it's an artificial form of photosynthesis, which we see around us all the time with green plants. So it's basically um, using sunlight uh, on a photocatalyst on, on which you would have water running over the, the photocatalyst. And with that sunlight uh, acting on that photocatalyst, uh, water is split into hydrogen and oxygen. So what that means in terms of green hydrogen production, we don't need to pr produce electricity from wind and solar farms, massive infrastructure involved there, and no electrolysis, so no electricity at all. Um, so we've got partners, Adelaide University, 28%, uh, Spark Technologies, 52%, uh, and uh, also in the joint venture is Fortescue, Future Industries at 20%. Uh, uh, so uh, we currently have been undertaking 
trials of this technology at Newcastle, uh, CSIRO, um, whereby we're using their uh, heliostat field uh, to um, use concentrated solar onto our reactor, uh, whereby we are actually producing the, the hydrogen in that reactor. So that's, uh, that's just been uh, taking place very recently, um, just over the last few weeks, and that's been uh, producing hydrogen as expected, uh, but it's the first, probably one of the first demonstrations of uh, concentrated solar on photocatalytic water splitting anywhere in the world. So we're, we're pretty proud of that. Um, whilst we've been sitting here today, we've received news that, uh, well, news that we've known about for some time, but we haven't been able to talk about it because it's been under, under embargo by the government, but uh, we've received a, a $470,000 uh, grant for, for that project, which will help us accelerate the, 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 uh, the, the work that we're doing um, so that we can crack into um, basically building a, a pilot plant for, for this technology. So that, that is uh, um, going to be, I think, a, a fantastic for, uh, thing for us to, to embark on. Uh, and once again, I think we'll be probably uh, the first in the world to do so. Um, the, the third part of uh, Spark, also related to renewable energy, um, is in the sodium ion battery space. We've heard a hell of a lot about lithium ion uh, or lithium today. Um, we're trying to get away from that somewhat by, um, by working on sodium ion batteries. Um, there's a lot of work going on around the world at the moment, particularly with uh, uh, the Chinese, who are probably more advanced than anyone in the world in, in terms of battery technology. Um, but it is, sodium ion batteries are seen as uh, a potential um, challenger, if you like, to the, to the mainstay uh, lithium ion. Uh, so sodium or salt is a thousand times more abundant than lithium, so it, it's, it's, it's not going to have the, the same sort of security of supply issues uh, nor cost uh, due to its abundance. Um, and it also operates at, at better temperature ranges, but I think uh, increasingly importantly it's, uh, it's also very safe. It, it doesn't combust like lithium ion batteries tend to do. So that's, that's a, a huge uh, bonus. Probably the one negative about sodium ion batteries is their, their capacity. So you can't put as much, um, it, it's not as dense in terms of its energy storage. So what we're doing is working on that, that one negative, if you like. Um, so we're working on the, on the anode, which is a carbon material. So sort of not too far removed with what we're doing with, with graphene. Um, using some of our expertise there. But the, um, the anode product is normally made, it's a hard carbon that's normally made from um, oil and gas derivatives. So it's uh, from fossil fuels or, or a mine product such as graphite. What we're doing is uh, looking to use um, um, biomass, so agricultural waste product. So once again, it feeds into this sustainability theme that we're working towards. And uh, the work that we're doing so far demonstrates that we can get 63% better capacity in the hard carbon than commercial grades of uh, hard carbon that are currently out there. So if we can help to overcome that um, one issue that perhaps sodium ion batteries do have, which is in terms of the capacity, then I think we'll go a long way to, to maybe seeing um, sodium ion batteries not just for industrial applications or domestic um, energy storage, but uh, certainly potentially in EVs as well. And in fact, BYD, together with, I think, uh, um, CATL in China, are already putting uh, sodium ion batteries into cars, um, where range is not such an issue in some of the, you know, sort of city type um, smaller cars. So huge potential there for us as well. So I think we're, all of what we're doing has a very strong sustainability theme, um, and it's uh, yeah, we're very excited about where we're headed. Thank you.